What a decade it has been for multidimensional transmitted telecommunications, also known as the telly. Think back to where we were a decade ago. Netflix and Hulu were building a revolution built on sitcom reruns. Comcast just purchased NBC. TV manufacturers sought to make 3D televisions the next big thing off the back of Avatar. Stewart and Colbert were killing it on Comedy Central, and AMC had transformed overnight from your grandparents' favorite movie channel to a drama powerhouse that launched several careers. Ten years later, cable is dead, Disney owns your soul, there's too much streaming going on, and I can't decide on anything new to watch because the amount of options is overwhelming. And with that, I present the biggest television failures of the 2010s. Number one. The decade began on January 1st, 2010. The first week was one of peace around the world. And on the seventh day, NBC screwed Conan O'Brien, forced him out of The Tonight Show after half of a year for the return of Jay Leno. This disaster was the gift of NBC Universal outgoing executives Jeff Zucker and Jeff Gaspin. No relation. Both these executives who ran NBC into the ground were on the way out pending the Comcast purchase. Conan O'Brien moved on to TBS, Jimmy Fallon became the new Tonight Show heir apparent while Leno kept the seat warm a couple more years. Fittingly enough, Leno's ratings fell to below Conan O'Brien's. NBC at the time, fourth place in network ratings, dead last, was mocked across the industry for their incompetence. Number two, allow me to tell the tale of Terra Nova. In 2012, Fox was hyping the show to be broadcast television's equivalent of Avatar, an expensive, special effects heavy, internationally filmed, poorly written production. It would have needed elite ratings to justify the show's cost. In the end, Terra Nova ranked 43rd on the year. Fox quietly canceled the show a few months after the season ended, and while the producers did shop the show to other networks, offering to slash the budgets and bring in new writers, the show kept cycling through showrunners, no one took the bait. And that was the tale of Terra Nova. Number three, Marco Polo. And as bad as Terra Nova was for Fox, a broadcast network, Marco Polo was Netflix's probably biggest costly mistake in terms of original content since they've gotten into the game. Ever since Netflix streaming launched, it was impossible to grasp their business model. They continue to build debt while investing in more original programming. I don't know if that's going to play as well as they think it might. And we also don't know how successful programs are for Netflix outside of their hand-picked stats and outsider surveys and press releases. But that's not really the case for Marco Polo. We know how bad Marco Polo was for Netflix. Marco Polo was Netflix's fourth original drama back in late 2014. However, it was the second most expensive show to produce at the time on a season by season basis behind, of course, Game of Thrones for HBO. And this was very much supposed to be Netflix's equivalent to Game of Thrones. Oh, don't worry, we'll get to that later. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Marco Polo incurred a loss of 200 million for Netflix. That would make it one of the biggest box office bombs of all time if it were a film. I, however, say that the sunk cost was worth it as it launched Benedict Wong into the mainstream. Number four. I think, I lost count. Let's talk about some of the failed subscription services that we have seen already. As I've said, there is simply too much streaming out there, and in five years, the, the cost of all your streaming services is probably going to outweigh your cable bill from 10 years ago when cable cutting became a serious movement. Just think about that for a few minutes. The streaming bubble is going to burst at some point in the next decade, I guarantee it, and some services will be unable to recover the debt that they have built. Let's just look at some of the services that have already failed, and we'll start with Yahoo Screen. Yahoo tried to launch their slate of original programming off the back of Community's final season, but the venture crashed in just a couple years, costing Yahoo $42 million. PlayStation View. 
This was supposed to be Sony's uh, alternative to Sling TV. It was one of several ventures launched with the PlayStation branding, including original content for PlayStation Network, which flopped, and this PlayStation View live streaming service was recently announced to be discontinued, so that service is dead. CISO was a comedy-focused streaming platform created by Comcast, lasted less than two years before shutting down. We're already seeing HBO Max, which is on the horizon for Warner Media, absorb content from other streaming platforms such as DC Universe and RT First. And I believe these services will probably be absorbed into HBO Max at some point in the near future. There's just simply too many streaming services. And I sit here today saying that, and there are several more on the horizon. We have NBC Universal's Peacock. Oh, what a horrible name. Peacock, everybody. Are you going to subscribe to Peacock? I know I will. Can't wait. Number five. So this is a show, a completely real show, and this is a real promo for this very real show that ABC decided to air in 2012. Hey Shakira, tone down the booty shake a little, will ya? This is just what my body does, bro. Hello? Hey sweetie, we're gonna get some lunch. Wanna join us? Who's that woman? I'll be right there. Who's that woman? ABC's work, yes. Excuse me. <gasps> oh my god. Help me. Series premiere Tuesday, January 3rd, 8.37, 30 Central on ABC. I would like to apologize on behalf of the House of Mouse for the very existence of what you had just seen. Sorry. Number six. My oh my, did you like how your favorite television show this decade wrapped up? I know I did. Mr. Robot's conclusion was as perfect as it gets. But I cannot say the same for Dexter or How I Met Your Mother or even... Game of Thrones. Dexter's finale saw the serial killer toss his sister's brain-dead body into the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Miami uh, during a hurricane, no less, before he escapes to a life of lumberjacking while his son flees to Argentina with a different serial killer. How I Met Your Mother's finale undid a marriage several years in the making so that Ted could reveal his feelings for Aunt Robin. Uh, as this is the showrunner's predetermined ending, they filmed the scenes with Ted's future children five years prior before the actors grew up, so they had to stick to this ending even though the show went in a completely different direction. Game of Thrones ended earlier this year, and... Well, I've been advised by my attorneys to avoid discussing the final season as to not cause emotional distress among anyone watching this video. You are my queen. Brand the Broken. Speaking of causing emotional distress, by the way, number 13, Reasons Why. Simply put, this is the only show I've ever heard of that actually increases your chances of dying by watching it. The show simply should not exist. Next, award shows. Let's put aside the fact that Steve Harvey and Warren Betty announced the wrong winners. Let's put aside the fact that the Oscars have now given up on even having a host. Let's put aside the fact that everyone is passing out with still an hour to go. Let's put aside the fact that all major awards have since long lost credibility and have been decided by popularity instead of merit. Let's put aside the fact that no one knows what the difference is between best sound editing and best sound mixing. Let's just put it all aside, you know? That's my new year resolution. Number uh, speed round. Yeah, let's do a speed round. Okay, here we go. NBC botching the Olympics opening ceremony every freaking time. 3D televisions never caught on and are now no longer being produced. NBC firing Dan Harmon from Community only to rehire him a year later. Man, NBC is popping up a lot today. All right, what else? Oh yeah, the one time a Disney Channel airing of Lilo and Stitch was interrupted by porn. All right, that's it for speed round. And finally, the final. Broadcast television is dead. 
Long live broadcast television. The past 10 years of cord cutting have taken a heavy toll on television ratings as a whole, but most specifically ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, and the broadcast networks. The combination of rising cable bills and the variety of content emerging on the too many to keep up with streaming platforms created a snowball effect of consumer discontent with the traditional model. What is keeping old telly afloat at this moment is pretty much live sports. There's a reason why ESPN is overwhelmingly the most expensive channel in any cable subscription. Now, I'm not honestly sure that this is much of a failure to be honest as much as it was an inevitability brought on by the digital revolution. What will broadcast television look like in a decade from now? Well, get ready for more live sports, cheap to produce reality television, and second runs of streaming shows, which we are already seeing. As for the future of streaming, it's about to get contested. The 2010s concluded with Disney and Apple, two of the largest conglomerates in the world, launching their respective streaming platforms. As mentioned earlier, we have HBO Max and Peacock on the way. Ugh. As I've said, I just think there are too many streaming platforms entering the fray and they cannot all coexist. If the 2010s were all about the rise of streaming, the 2020s will be about the cannibalization of streaming. Let's follow it together. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. Happy New Year. What was your favorite show of the year? Please, let's talk about it below and let's get ready for a great new decade.